Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Creme Carmel. That's right. You can call it flan if you want. They're both French words. But Creme Carmel sounds kind of fancy, and flan kind of sounds like, well, you know. So I'm going to go with creme caramel here, but no matter what you call it, the fact remains this is one of the world's greatest desserts and, I'm happy to report, one of the world's easiest desserts. In fact, the only slightly tricky part would be this first step where we have to do the caramel part of the creme caramel. And the first part of that step would be to spray your ramekins, heat proof of course, with just a little bit of nonstick vegetable spray. You can see those are placed in a casserole dish, which is what we're going to bake them in. So give those a spray and set those aside. And then it's time to make what's called a dry caramel. And it's called that because the only ingredient is sugar. You're going to put that in a small, dry, heavy bottom saute pan. You're going to place it over medium heat. And you're going to stand there. And not much is going to happen for the first few minutes. But then you'll see this little ring around the outside where the sugar will start to melt. And then more of it will melt. And it will start to darken. And when that starts to happen, it's very important you keep the pan moving. All right, gently shake it back and forth, swirl it around until all that white sugar melts. And there will be wisps of smoke. Don't get nervous. That's not a problem. We want to get this nice and dark. And it's not going to burn unless you stop moving it. Okay, so just keep swirling. All right, don't put any utensils in this. Do not, under any circumstances, put your fingertips in this to taste it. Unless, of course, you're some kind of criminal and you'd like to not have fingerprints anymore. Then I guess you can. And when all the sugar's melted and it looks like that, turn off the heat. You are done. Congratulations. You just made the most terrifying form of caramel known to man. All right, but don't get cocky. We have one step left. You're going to quickly and carefully take this over to your ramekins and distribute it equally into the bottom of each. And because it's so hot, it's going to spread out nice and evenly. So those are all set and ready for the creme part of the creme caramel, which is nothing more than a simple custard. And by simple, I mean it only took me literally 30 years to figure out the exact perfect formula. Although in fairness, I was doing other stuff. But anyway, my formula includes one whole egg plus three yolks. We're also going to add a pinch of salt and some white granulated sugar. And you can just dump all the sugar in. But you know what? How often do you get to see sugar being sprinkled over egg yolks? Not that often. So I wanted to savor that. At that point, we're going to take a whisk and we're going to pop those yolks, which feels strangely satisfying. And then we're going to mix that up until the sugar is dissolved. And we don't have to go too long here. We're just going to mix that for about a minute until we can't feel any of that grainy sugar in the bowl. It might get a little frothy. The color will turn kind of a pale yellow. It's going to look just like that. And at that point, we're going to add the rest of the ingredients, first of which being my secret ingredient, creme fraiche. And as far as alternatives to that, I will talk about that on the blog post. But if you do want it to be the most awesome creme caramel in the world, you will use that. We're also going to add some whole milk, a nice big splash of vanilla, and then a little splash of another secret ingredient, a little orange cognac, also known as Grand Marnier. You may, of course, remember that from our world-famous souffle video. So a little bit of that, and you're going to take your whisk, and you're going to mix that until completely incorporated, until completely smooth. And that is ready to ladle into our prepared ramekins. We're not going to fill them all the way up. So we're going to go about two-thirds to 75% of the way. Try to portion as even as possible. Once those are filled, we're going to take some hot tap water, and you're going to fill your casserole dish halfway up. And that's going to help the heat transfer more slowly and more evenly throughout the cooking process. You're going to go ahead and place that in the middle of a preheated 325 degree oven for about 45 to 50 minutes or until just barely set. And I usually start checking around 40 minutes, around 42 minutes, something like that. This is not a recipe you're going to screw up by peaking and checking. So I'll open the oven. I'll give the pan a little shake to see what's happening. And if you see the slow motion shot here, you see how the center is still a little liquefied? There's like a ripple under the surface. You can tell it's not set. That needs a couple more minutes. All right, so mine went like 46 minutes. And you can see here if I give it a little shake with the tongs, all right, there's still a little jiggle, but that liquefied wiggle in the middle is no longer visible. Okay, so that's perfect. At that point, we're going to remove them from the pan onto a rack to cool a little bit. These are traditionally served cold. And before unmolding, you want to go around with a knife. Make sure it's not attached around that edge. And once you've gone around, you can see that moving. You're going to invert it onto a plate and then feast your eyes on one of the greatest sights in the history of the culinary arts, ladies and gentlemen, the creme caramel. Oh my God. I'm not sure if I can finish this video. It takes my breath away. Now you do get a little more caramel if you unmold them warm. So what I like to do is unmold them and then chill them. So I do like to serve these cold. But again, up to you. You are the Melly Mel of your creme caramel. And right here as I go in with the spoon, 
you can see that just unbelievably smooth, silky texture, just enough egg to keep it together, just impossibly creamy. That little bit of tang from the creme fraiche does magical things that are just beyond my vocabulary. I mean, look at that. So you can enjoy these just like that, absolutely spectacular. Or if you want to get super fancy, you can do this. In the bottom of the ramekin, there'll be a couple teaspoons of caramel that don't come out. You can pop that in the microwave for about a half a minute until it liquefies again. And then if you drizzle it on a silk pad, you can make designs. Right here I started, I was going to make some rabbit ears. And I thought to myself, well, that's stupid. So I changed my mind and started doing this random squiggly thing. And it's so cool as that temperature of the sugar comes down, you actually can pull it into these really long strands. Kind of fun. Again, be careful, very hot, very dangerous. And once it cools, you can peel it off, place it on your creme caramel, and proceed to blow minds. People will be like, I had no idea you were a world-class pastry chef, but now I know. Anyway, I really do hope you give this a try. This thing is such a crowd pleaser, and as you saw, fairly simple to make. So head over to foodwishes.com for more information and the ingredient amounts, as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.